it's not until people get into those 10 millions of dollars of of assets that they get into a place where they're not paying taxes on certain things. There's a term that I want you to remember. It's called unrealized capital gains. Tell them real quick, what is that? Unreal, unrealized capital gains. The idea of rich paying people paying less becomes complicated because of this concept right here. This is how people negate paying taxes on things that have unrealized capital gains because they aren't taxed until they're sold. So, an example. I have $5 million in stocks. I don't ever pay taxes on that money until, until I cash that money out oh. and put that money in my pocket. So, if that stock grows from $5 million to $10 million to $20 million, that money is not getting taxed there. And what I can do with $20 million in stocks is I can take a loan out against that money because I'm like, hey, look, I, I got assets. I got $20 million. You see, I got it. Let me get $5 million from you in a loan that I don't have to pay taxes on. Let me use that money, da 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 and then I pay myself back on top of that when I make some money. I, buy, I take $5 million, I buy a home, I invest it, do whatever, and then I put that money back, and I'm like, oh, I got to pay the loan back first, and then the rest is mine. It negates how much you actually are spending and how much you're actually making, so you end up paying less taxes. That is the concept of the rich pay less taxes because they, again, like we were talking about, they have structured their setup in such a way that, like, the money is is there, but it's never, like, coming out in the way that you have to pay taxes on. Dom Kennedy, OPM, other people's money. Exactly. There's a thing that, that when you talk about when, when you start talking about generational wealth. Well, some of the biggest families in the world, the Rockefellers and, you know, all those, the Fords and all those big name people, they structure their assets for generational wealth. They structure um, trust and they structure um, other types of financial um, uh, routes that they can take so that as things are passed down, you don't have to pay taxes on it as it changes hands. Because a lot of times when you inherit something, you're like, oh, you got to pay a tax on that. But if it's a trust that is held over this family's group and is passed down from like trust leader to trust leader, then it just stays there and, and you can borrow money against it and this, that, the other thing. That is um next level that's next level yes yeah, and that's level. the stuff that's the stuff that as brown people i want us to like delve into and learn and start doing like i don't have any desires to like have children i don't have any desire to like keep a legacy and keep the kirkland name running long but like i do have a business and i do have assets and i do have things that like i don't want to see just like fall into the ethers so like the way that I structure my stuff is that like at some point some family member or some person that I have connected myself with down the road will be able to like inherit that. these things because I'm not gonna be here for it yeah. you know so like that's the thing is like and just trying not to fall into like business practices that are not the best way long term mm -hmm. like it's like everybody thinks about um, prime example, the guy who did the voice in The Lion King for Simba. I forget his name. He's an actor. His James Earl Jones? No, for Simba. Not, uh, okay. not what was Mufasa. I forget his name. He was... Definitely not Mufasa. Yeah. Um, but he, his mother told him when he took the role of Simba, don't take the check. Don't take the check. He was offered like, I think like 200 some thousand mm -hmm. just to get paid. She was like, don't take the check, take the royalties from the movie, get a percentage. Because with a percentage of royalties, you will be paid forever. He gets paid every time that movie does anything. Every time Disney on Ice does something. Anytime somebody buys a DVD of Lion King. Anytime Lion King is played on Spotify. Anytime he gets a percentage of that check. So he continues to make money 30 years after that movie came out. And that is why it's very important that we have something like business music finance 
to where we can get the game from people like Allen who have the ability to educate our inner city youth. And that gentleman's name was James Wheeler.